few years ago, a Metro Nashville employee had a really cool idea. He had noticed that a lot of Nashville school children never get the chance to go to the public library. Instead, they depend on their smaller school libraries for books and research. His idea was that kids should be able to request books from their library and have them delivered to them right at school. Now, when the light bulb came on for this employee, he was really lucky because he had a special illuminating superpower. He was the mayor. <laughs> mayor Dean called the director of the library who convened a team around the idea and got to work. And in 2009, Metro started limitless libraries with just four pilot schools. Today, all 126 schools participate, and kids can request books from the branch libraries and have them delivered. Just this year, more than 65,000 books have come off the shelves and into the hands of kids. <laughs> but what if you have a great idea and you're not the mayor? <laughs> what if you're a frontline employee or a citizen outside of government altogether and you have a great innovation that will make our community better? Where is the space for your light bulb? Well, Mayor Dean knew that turning an idea into reality faces a lot of obstacles. Not everybody can call the director of a department and have a team convened around an issue. Not everybody feels comfortable pursuing their ideas or even knows where to go to make them heard. So in 2013, Mayor Dean launched the Metro Office of Innovation. He wanted to create space for other people's light bulbs. So when Christine and I were hired as co-chief innovation officers, two government geeks had just won their dream jobs. <laughs> but we are also worriers, and one of the first worries we had was about the word innovation itself. Innovation is a buzzword in corporate America and in the nonprofit world. People say innovation for everything, from incremental change to great ideas that have, don't have a home to true breakthroughs. Business journals have covered Taco Bell's application of disruptive innovation to tacos. <laughs> and perhaps one of our favorites is a candy company's tagline, innovation in licorice. <laughs> so when we started Nashville's Office of Innovation, we, we wanted it to be more than just about a buzzword. We wanted to empower people to bring powerful solutions to our community's problems. So think about, you know, if, if you have an opportunity to, to focus on an innovation, you know, what you will do with that. And, you know, for us, we recognized that there had to be a structure. So we focused on what we call the architecture of innovation. Today, we are going to share stories that illustrate the six pillars of that architecture so that you, too, can begin to focus on bringing a light to your organization's greatest challenges. <coughs> And you can go beyond just talking about innovation to actually implementing it. Pillar one, build an electrical grid. Even in tough environments like the government, there are lots of people with cool entrepreneurial ideas. They just need a place to plug in their light bulbs. They need an electrical grid. Soon after we took office, we began to build that grid with Ideas to Reality, or I2R. It's a partnership with our amazing Nashville Entrepreneur Center. Mayor Dean issued an invitation to all Metro employees to submit an idea or a challenge for an intensive entrepreneurial incubator. An incubator not to build another money-making business, but to address our community's challenges. Like other incubators, it requires an intense, focused time commitment, long days over a short period of time. We also ask our Metro Innovation Fellows to write a business plan worthy of funding and to give pitches that will generate excitement for the ideas. In the first two years, I2R teams have created a plan to use Metro-owned properties for affordable housing, to better use citizens to support city efforts, and they built an open data portal where we share government data with the public so that they can come up with more solutions to our community's challenges. And one of our I2R teams created a program that's addressing one of the key challenges in our nation, the mental health crisis in our jails. 
In Nashville, like in other cities, we actually house more people in our jails with mental illness than do mental health facilities or hospitals. Since, metro, since federal government programs and state programs have gone from basically meager to non-existent, we've criminalized illness. But this I2R team knew that actually a lot of people in jail have diagnoses that qualify them for federal benefits. Benefits that can keep them from having to live on the streets or ending up in jail. But getting these benefits can be tough, mostly because of the paperwork. Think for a minute about how hard it is to fill out a government form. <laughs> right, then think about how tough it would be if you had a mental illness and you were living on the streets or were in jail. So the I2R team has placed specially trained caseworkers right inside our jails to focus on this issue. And they've given them the time and the resources to fill out the applications alongside the clients. In the first months of the program, Clients connected with those needed benefits in under three weeks, a process that usually takes months, even years, if it happens at all. There are cool entrepreneurial ideas in even really unlikely places. People just need a place to plug in. They need an electrical grid. Pillar two, invite people to flip the switch. To get people to think differently, sometimes you just have to ask them to do it. So we invite people to flip the switch so they can bring their creative energy to the problems that we face. This is the Music City Center, the MCC. It's our new 1.2 million square foot downtown convention center. It's beautiful. It's also three blocks long and sometimes confusing. There are signs inside that you can use to get to where you want to go and there are really friendly folks that you can ask for directions, but people still get lost. Today, there is another way for you to get to the, the Dunkin' Donuts at the, that's in the MCC, or perhaps most importantly, the bathrooms. <laughs> and it's all through this indoor wayfinding app. It's available on iOS and Android platforms, for those who are curious. But small Bluetooth beacon devices communicate with this app to provide you with step-by-step -step photo directions to get you to your destination. This new technology was created in response to an invitation to flip the switch. Out of curiosity and by show of hands, how many of you have ever participated in a hackathon? Hackathon. Okay. Hackathon. So I see a couple hands, and for those who have participated in hackathons, I, I think I can still see that gleam in your eyes of way too little sleep, over 48 straight hours of software coding, and all of it is fueled by Red Bull. <laughs> right? So hackathons bring together coders, designers, entrepreneurs to solve challenges. And cities have helped to organize civic hackathons to address our community's challenges. But as cities, what we were kept running into was what we've called the Monday morning problem. You know, these cool ideas are developed over a weekend hackathon, but when Monday rolls around, there's no home for that prototype. There's no way to sustain that innovation, and there's definitely no way to scale it to another city. So in 2014, we invited the cities of Boston, Palo Alto, and Raleigh to, open, to pull our markets and our budgets to collectively ask developer communities to submit their ideas. Local governments work together to ask people to flip the switch. In Nashville, Vanderbilt professor Jules White and his students partnered with Nashville company Beacon to respond to this challenge that was pushed out by the MCC, and they created this indoor wayfinding app, which won the pilot program across the four cities. So the city acted as a laboratory for innovation to help create a sustainable and scalable technology. What we are looking for now is for more and new ways to invite people to flip the switch, even bigger ways for larger, larger innovations. In 2015, 25 cities and one state have now joined to invite coders and entrepreneurs to bring their energy to create a new healthcare-focused technology. For people that are interested in submitting an application, they can compete for $120,000 that these cities have put on the table. They can also compete for a finalist spot and $100,000 more from Jumpstart Foundry, one of our country's leading entrepreneurial accelerators right here in Nashville. So organizations and communities that want innovation just need to ask people to flip that switch so they can bring their creative energy to the problems that we face 
and begin to create new and innovative solutions. Pillar three, capture the light. A lot of innovative ideas are spontaneous, and part of our job is to be there to capture the moment when the light begins to shine. Organizations need to have someone whose job it is to listen for the what if question. Otherwise, the what if can get lost because it's nobody's job to pursue it. This is the extreme weather transit card. Innovative breakthroughs can be both big and small. Well, this one is literally small, but its impact has been huge on some of our most vulnerable citizens. Last year's polar vortex was really tough for people living on the streets. So last spring, a team of us started to meet to plan for this winter, to try to make sure that every citizen had a warm and safe place to sleep, even in the coldest night. And as we had these conversations, the issue of transportation came up again and again. Because even if you have enough shelter beds, a lot of times it's hard to get people to those beds. Agencies give out bus passes, uh, but they only last for a day, and people understandably use them right when they get them. You can't give a bus pass to a person experiencing homelessness and say, you need to save it for a really cold day. It just doesn't work. So as we're having these conversations, one of the employees around the table thought of the transit card in her wallet. Employers give these cards out, many of you probably have them, to encourage people to ride the bus and then you can ride the bus for free. What if we could get these cards to people who needed them, who were experiencing homelessness, to get them to shelters during cold nights? So that's the moment when the light begins to shine. But think of the people around that table, shelter administrators, mental health providers, outreach workers, all of them incredibly hardworking, but also overwhelmed. But it's our job in the Office of Innovation to capture those moments. And so we were able to work quickly with the Transit Authority, the Homelessness Commission, a network of outreach workers, and came up with a way to develop and distribute these cards to those who need them most. These cards have great data embedded in them. It's not associated with anybody's identity, so don't worry about that. But we can see when and where they're used and track that against weather data and shelter locations so we can learn how to serve people better. This winter was the first year that we had the cards and more than 3,000 rides were taken by homeless people in Nashville to get them to shelters. Thank you. Great ideas are out there, but you need somebody at the table whose job it is to capture the light. Pillar four, keep the electricity flowing. So innovation requires disruption, and to make sure that disruption breaks through the bureaucratic inertia, you need to keep the electricity flowing. To do that, innovators need to convene a consistent team around the table. And when that team meets, it needs to make sure that there's, it's with sufficient frequency and urgency and that, that, this, that this team has sufficient time to actually work through the tough issues. I'm sure you all know this, but Google Fiber is coming to Nashville. <laughs> More than 1,000 cities competed, and Nashville is one of the first 10 cities selected in the country for this cutting edge technology. Now, th there are a lot of different reasons that Nashville was selected for fiber. You know, we are a city with tremendous buzz. We also received incredible community support. I mean, how many technology initiatives have their own bumper stickers, <laughs> Facebook pages, and Twitter handles? But buzz and community support were only part of what we needed to do to get fiber. Government needed to deliver on the difficult technical and bureaucratic processes that fiber faced. We needed to work differently to meet this innovative opportunity. So think for a moment about how organizations typically approach a possible innovation. If we're even aware that the opportunity exists, we might convene a group to think about it. And if that group begins to meet, oftentimes it's for short periods of time, infrequently, and with a constantly changing cast of characters around the table. So in Metro, for our innovations, we tried to do a different approach. And one of those was called Metro's One Stop Shop. So once the one-stop shop is a physical location where any resident and any developer can go and submit all of their codes and permit applications. The days of wandering between buildings, all for the same project, 
are over. So, <laughs> so to, to make this one-stop shop a reality, Terry Cobb, our codes director, and a 25-year veteran of Metro government. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, your voice is now. <laughs> <laughs> He convened the right people around the table and dedicated the right time and attention that was necessary to make this idea into reality. So when Google Fiber came knocking, the Office of Innovation was able to establish a consistent team to meet. For over a year and through today, we still meet in that one-stop shop to keep the electricity flowing. And when Google selected Nashville, it talked about that coordinated effort and the success of the one-stop shop for part of the reasons of why they wanted to choose Nashville. So in complex environments, if you want innovation, you can't afford a power outage. You really need to convene a team that has a structure to keep the electricity flowing. Pillar five, cut the electricity. While a lot of our time is spent trying to keep the electricity flowing, we also ask whether particular light bulbs should keep burning or if we need to cut the electricity. Sam is one of our amazing Metro workers. He's a frontline worker with operational duties that he's so good at that he became adept at training his colleagues in these duties. And when his department needed some of those colleagues recertified on a key skill, Sam developed a, an internal program that was really successful to do the certification process. That's when the light bulb came on for Sam. He recognized that other departments needed the same set of skills and the same recertification. He came to us to see if maybe that idea could work to take it metro-wide. He'd never done a budget before or a cross-departmental meeting or put together a business proposal, and we worked with him to do all of that to really vet the idea. And we realized it just didn't work. And so instead of just letting it linger, we put it to rest definitively. We issued a review saying why we weren't going to pursue it and then shared that review with everyone. Sam sent us an email soon after we pulled the plug and we were really worried when we opened it, but it actually expressed gratitude for being respected and having his idea respected and being given a chance to learn. So we love what if moments, but what ifs can often limp along, never being fully explored or fully stopped. It's our job to arrive at endpoints, to stop things definitively or to let them go. And when we stop them, to make sure that the shutdown procedures respect the ideas and the people involved. So if you want innovation that lasts and has impact, you need to be willing to cut the electricity. Pillar six. Sometimes the light bulb needs to be a disco ball. <laughs> so innovation is all about breaking away from the expected, and that is really hard to do. So we try to lighten things up. We bring snacks. We order pizza. We have inside jokes. Uh, we even have our own data-themed jewelry. <laughs> Metro Data Geek. So if you want innovation with impact for your organization, you don't need to hire a whole new workforce. You also don't need millions of new dollars in your budget. Once you realize that people who work for your organization already have great ideas, what you need to do is create that architecture to allow them to shine. Build that architecture for innovation, that space for the light bulb. And you'll see that they'll illuminate not only your organization, but your world. Thanks.